In order for a structure to be soundly built, it has to rest upon a level and solid foundation. Otherwise, the higher the building goes, the more unstable and dangerous it becomes. In Freemasonry, we are told to walk and act as upright men and masons. But what does this mean? How can you determine whether you are an upright man? How can you determine if your actions are lined up by the proverbial plum? We have answers for this on today's episode of The Winding Stairs. You have arrived at The Winding Stairs, a program dedicated to Masonic education and the art of self-improvement. I am your host, Juan Sepulveda, and I thank you for spending some time with me exploring some of the questions about what it means to be an upright man and Mason. Today, I wanted to start by talking about that tool that we are presented in one of the degrees, which is the plum. The plum is a heavy weight at the end of a long string. It is used to make sure that whatever is being constructed is perpendicular to its foundation. In the allegorical sense, we describe it as being able to walk uprightly, to make decisions that are in line with the will of the Creator. In, in essence, you can think of, of this line stretching your body and making you stand tall, proud of the fact that you're doing things correctly. But it's very difficult at times for us to figure out what is it that we need to do to be considered an upright man? How can you gauge whether this edifice that I am building, which is myself, is one that is in line with that expectation from the Creator? Obviously, one of the main answers that you're going to get is that regardless of your faith, you're going to be called upon to look at your great light as a ruling guide to how you should behave in the world, how you should act to your fellow, towards your fellow man. In, in our case is, is the, Holy, the Holy Bible. And in the Holy Bible, we are presented with a passage of scripture that illustrates a little bit better what it means to act by the plum. If we go to the book of Amos 7, verse 7 through 8, it says, this is what he showed me. And this is Amos talking about a vision he had about God. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. If you've gone through the Masonic degrees, you recognize the moment in which you are presented with these tools of the plum and in which you hear these words for the first time. For those of you who uh, are Bible readers or perhaps are familiar with it, you may have come across this story before. Now, of course, we're presenting this to you right now out of context, but what does the Lord seem to mean in the context of, I will spare them no longer? Well, I took it upon myself to go back further in the book of Amos and read what had transpired, what had been held back or what, what it was. And apparently the people of Israel had been committing some sins that God was not pleased with. And when he had been preparing some sort of punishment to correct it, the intercession of Amos prevented God from casting a plague and creating all kinds of, of difficulty for, for the people. So there was an intercession there trying to avoid the people of Israel from, from going through uh, whatever punishment God had created. But it's very curious because 
if you if you continue reading uh, before, you can see, okay, what was the sin? What is it that Israel was allegedly doing that was so severe that God was going to unleash his wrath upon them? And if we go back earlier to the second chapter, verse 6 to 7, it says, They sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They trample on the heads of the poor as upon the dust on the ground and deny justice to the oppressed. Think about this. Today, thousands of years after the, these books were written, we find ourselves in situations where we have to ask ourselves, are we being just? Are we serving justice for the people that deserve it? When you look at what they had done, it says here that they trample on the heads of the poor as upon the dust of the ground. In other words, they are not caring for the poor amongst them. See, in masonry, one of the main charities, um, one of the main virtues uh, that we talked about is charity. How do you have the empathy to recognize the suffering on someone that's less fortunate than you? How then you take actions in order to restitute some of these injustices that they've gone through? Now, it is important that we, in our exploration of what we are lacking, we recognize that we may be overlooking the importance of taking care of the less fortunate, standing up for the rights of people, being uh, an advocate for justice to be served whenever it deemed necessary. These are some of the things that you and I can consider uh, will make us to be recognized as upright men and masons. Now, in a conversation about a structure not being plung, I would be remiss to not mention the most notorious architectural blunder in history. Of course, I'm talking about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, beautifully designed, thoughtfully uh, created in, in the plans, but poorly executed. When this building went up, the foundation appeared to be level. And it was, based on the measurements it was a level surface upon, upon where they would build the, this uh, campanile, which is a, a, a bell tower. What they didn't take into account was the fact that the floor underneath it, or the, the different layers of sediment underneath the area that they measured, they weren't solid enough to sustain the weight of this massive structure that was going to be built. Now, let's explore how can this connect with the way that we are building our own edifice. We may be, in outward appearances, to be level, to be level-headed, to consider others our equals, to meet upon the level, as we discussed in the previous episode of The Winding Stairs. But is that level that we have discovered, that we have determined, is it solid enough to sustain the building of the edifice that we will continue to become? And that's one of the important questions we have to ask ourselves. Are we truly meeting brothers on the level? Are we truly meeting fellow members of the human race as being on the level with us? And we really have to search deep inside and make sure that that foundation is not just level, but it's solid. Now, in this architectural blunder that I talk about, it's one peculiar example because for the most part, whenever a building is inclined, whenever a wall has a divergence from the perpendicular, it becomes incredibly dangerous. And most of the time, it just has to be torn down and began anew. The Winding Stairs is made possible by FreemasonryArt.com, the Masonic art store where I share the creations that I make. 
I recently created a Masonic pin display apron where you can proudly show all the pins in your collection. Every pin tells a story. It reminds you of that day where you met some brothers or that day when you had an incredible initiatic experience. If you have your pins confined to the darkness of a drawer, bring them from darkness to light by proudly displaying them in one of our Masonic pin display aprons. To see them and place an order today, go to freemasonryart.com. In this example, it took many, many years in order for it to be considered to be a stable enough building for people to be able to go into it or be around it. The latest of many efforts throughout uh, throughout decades to solidify this building took over a decade and it took over 30 million euros in cost in order to deem it a safe place and to preserve it as it is. Don't you think that those 30 million euros could have been spent elsewhere? If this had not been done in, in an improper way, that money could have gone elsewhere. The effort, the manpower, the thought capital would have been able to be employed in something else. Now, if we bring that analogy to ourselves, if we make sure that the foundation that we are building up our edifice is level and solid, then our energy, our thought capital can go into building up, into elevating ourselves to higher levels. But if our foundation is flawed or is not level, is not perfect enough for what we're trying to build, then it will take additional time and additional effort in order to bring us back up to plumb, or at least to a position that could be deemed upright. When we are told to be upright before God and men, the way that I interpret that is that you have two things that you can look at in order to derive your guidance to become an upright man, to become a better man. Of course, in that phrase, we see an upright man before God. In the way that I see it, it's a reliance upon your faith. Going back to the great light that you follow and studying the scriptures and trying to glean from it as much benefit as you can, as much understanding as you can, as you can muster. And then the other part would be before man. There are things that are not included in the Bible that are part of our intelligent discussions as a society. We have come together in consensus to try to determine what is moral. What is something that we can deem to be upright within our society? And it is important that we have the necessary conversations to determine whether something that has been practiced in the past, whether does it make sense for us to continue practicing it in the future? Things that used to be looked at as acceptable in the past, we can agree today that perhaps are no longer feasible for us to continue to practice. So when we're asked to be when we're asked to be upright men and masons before God and men, acting as such before God and man, you can see this duality of serving the divine and serving the terrestrial. How do we balance that effort to, to become better? And how do we gather the necessary information to make better decisions as a man, as a mason? Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about was we have thoughts. We have thoughts that many times we don't have instant control over. But we're giving tools in order for us to make better decisions with those thoughts whenever they present it. I was recently having a conversation with my wife about the fact that we, we can't control what thoughts bubble up in our mind. It's almost like you don't make that decision yourself. And I'll try a fun experiment here with you. I'm gonna ask you to take a second and think about what is your favorite film? What's your favorite movie? I would love to hear in the comment section what, what came to mind 
as your favorite movie. And then I'm going to tell you that you perhaps had very little control upon that thought materializing in your mind. It just showed up in your mind. You didn't necessarily go through a whole long thought process of, okay, what are my favorite movies or have been my favorite movies in the past? Normally, when I ask you to think of a movie, one movie shows up in your mind and you perhaps have no control over it at the moment. But after it bubbles up, you can decide to scrutinize whether this is really the best answer. And you can ask yourself further questions or you can present it to someone and say, do you really think this is my favorite movie? And the other person may say, no, you never watched that movie. I think I thought your favorite movie was this one. And then on second thought, you may think, oh, you know what? That's right. I, I really enjoy that movie more than I enjoy this one. So now you have adjusted a thought for which you had little to no control initially. Now you have taken that and you have shaped it differently. And if I were to ask you now in the future, now what is your favorite movie? Think of one movie. The movie that comes up perhaps is the one that you just molded and uh, deposited in the repository of your mind. The same thing goes for things that are, are difficult. For example, let's say you have, you're passing judgment on someone because of the way that they spoke, the way that they behaved, the, the place they were born, the religion they practice, their sexual preference. Perhaps you, in your gut, instantly, upon finding out that detail, you may form a judgment or have a thought bubble up into your mind. Now, that thought, of course, now it's going to be presented to you and you make decisions with that thought. It could be something very negative. You could have a very negative opinion of Puerto Ricans, and I have no control over that other than leading by example and trying to help you construct a better expectation from my fellow Puerto Ricans, right? Now, what actions you take based on that irrational thought that bubbled up in your mind are what's going to set you apart from other people. Making a decision of how to act on that thought. So you walk and act as, a, uh, as an upright man. You think and you act, but make sure that you are doing everything in your power to nourish your mind and your soul so that you can not only have upright, plumb thoughts, but also the actions necessary to back, that, back those thoughts up. Now, elaborating on the action part of that discussion, how can you figure out to act as an upright man? And I would encourage you to think and ask yourself, if you are implementing the, the virtues of, of charity, perhaps of compassion, of uh, empathy, justice, these are all the different virtues that you can implement to support an upright behavior. So here's a little trick that has worked for me and I hope it does for you in order to determine whether an action and a thought is actually moral and upright, if it's something that you should be proud of. And I would recommend that you ask yourself, does this thought and this action contribute to the betterment of society? Is it a just Am I serving justice in the process of taking this step? Is it charitable? Is it generous? Does it alleviate the suffering on other people? Or does it further cement their, their turmoil? These are very helpful questions that, of course, we can elaborate upon. And this is a topic that is very profound that we can spend a lot of time talking. And I encourage you to engage in that conversation with me through social media, where I will continue to post related topics on this. And perhaps later on, we'll revisit this and, and help you better, uh, or help myself better in the process of determining whether something is, is an upright action. So if you don't follow me on social media, I encourage you to go to TikTok or Instagram or Facebook and look for The Winding Stairs. We're engaging in these kinds of conversations, and I think it's important. We're in a very privileged position when we are 
members of the fraternity. And it would be it would be a terrible loss if we didn't take advantage of that position in order for us to do good for our fellow human beings. Are our actions, are they just, are they fair, are they compassionate? These are all questions that we can answer and, and hopefully we can do this together in, in our journey through life. I wanted to take a moment also to thank all of my supporters on Patreon. They help me produce this kind of content week after week, and I really thank them for that. They also help me in the selection of some topics. So if you wanna have that kind of access, get early access to our videos and our audio podcast, please consider supporting our program by becoming one of our patrons. To find, for, to find out more details about it, please go to patreon.com forward slash Juan Sepulveda. I'll have a link here in the description for you as well. So that brings this show to an end and I really thank you for spending this time with me and I really encourage you to think about this more. Engage in this conversation with other brothers and see what you come up with. If you find other passages of scripture or quotes that you think will contribute to this conversation, make sure to add them in the comment section uh, wherever you found this video so that we can continue that conversation further. As always, I'm very thankful for your time, for your attention, and for your love. And until next time, may your steps be firm and your path illuminated as we continue our journey up the winding stairs.